Hey there, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk, Tech Talk. number 39. I got it right this time. Even with the sore finger. 39. But I don't know how it is we keep coming up with stuff to talk about, but it's like, well, something new every week, so we'll do it. What and we get? repeat ourselves sometimes, but that's because there's a lot of things that need to be repeated, apparently. There's always an update. We got some yeah. great stuff uh, on microphones and source elements and stuff. software and gears, gear and a little gripe from me. Yes. And your questions. Stay tuned. Voice over body shop tech talk coming up right now. From the outer reaches, they came bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voice over audio and together from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hi there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Body Shop. I jumped on you there. <laughs> Tech Talk. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to try to jump the gun on these, some of these things. <laughs> It's tech talk. tech talk, tech talk, tech talk, tech talk, tech talk. You guys just love tech talk. It's like every week we're here and thousands of you watch this show. Like, okay. <laughs> if you insist, I guess well, we we'll keep, keep telling going. them to stop using the forums and the groups for tech support. <laughs> right. so maybe they're listening. Yeah. Just come in here. We got the answers for you. We Ask us. You You're going to get the right answer, yep. which, which by the way is why we're here. Uh, it says here, plugorama. Uh, <laughs> plugorama. Plugorama. It's time to talk about what George and I do, which is help you with your home voiceover studio. I mean, do you realize what a unique place a home voiceover studio is? It's not a big studio with guitars hanging on the wall and gold records and windows and you know, somebody, you know, if you got somebody receptionist living, at the front. Yeah. Hi, know, can I help you? You know, and the you engineer the going, ah, okay, you're right. No, it's just you and generally your closet or your booth. Uh, and if you don't really know how to set one up, how long we've been doing this? I mean, we've been doing the show for nine years, but you and I have been doing home studio stuff for what? 15 years now. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, as long as almost as long since I've been as long as I've been in uh, L.A. since since 2004. So it's 15 years, and I've been doing yeah. this since about the same time. Yeah. And nobody knows as much about home studios as we do, and we don't say that as an egotistical thing. It's just when you work with hundreds and hundreds of people, you see it all. You know what's gonna you know if someone says what's this noise? It's like oh well. It's, you know, you've, you've we have our uh, we have our ten thousand hours of mastery at this point. Yeah, that's true. Maybe we should do the <laughs> the master class. Well, we like actually working with people one on one because yeah. every voice is different and every room is different. It's a very personalized thing for sure. Absolutely, and so we give you very very personal service. 
we ask you the right questions. I don't think other people will like, well, get this microphone and get this, this processor and get this thing. You go into those Facebook forums, you're going to end up spending a lot of money on stuff that you're never going to use, nor understand how to use. We keep it simple. We get you up and we get you running and we make sure that you're always running right. But we also teach you how to do it so you don't have to bother us that much. <laughs> I guess that's one way to put it. But I think it's important that you work with professionals who actually know what they're talking about, not people who are experts in one studio, their own. And uh, we do it. We we're not competitors. We're here. We complement each other. But if you want to work with George, where do they go? Head over to georgethetech.com or georgethe.tech. A clever short domain that people still get confused about. Um, that's where you can find all my tech support um, um, services. I have a, a menu of different ways we can work together on specific topics. You can just book support. There's even a ability to book emergency booking of time. If you really need it, help like ASAP, um, I can get you that help. And uh, sometimes we just need a sound check. That's on there too. Dan has a different flavor of sound check, but the same idea <laughs> over at his website. And that is homevoiceoverstudio.com. And uh, yeah, if you scroll to the bottom of my website, uh, the homepage, there's a specimen collection cup. And for $25, I will analyze your audio and talk to anybody that I've done this for. And I'll tell you, I'm very comprehensive about what it is that, you know, I, I listen for certain things and there are certain elements that, you know, we grade what your studio is like and how are you using it. And uh, if you perhaps you're not very knowledgeable on these things, we can take the time and, uh, and, and consult with you and teach you how to do it right so you can be a voice actor and not an engineer. I mean, right. there are certain things you have to know how to do, but you don't want to be constantly monitoring your engineering. You want to be constantly monitoring your acting because you're voice actors anyway. So check us out, go to our websites and uh, book time with us because it's, it's better than guessing a lot of guesswork. Absolutely. We can save you lots of money and hours and hours and hours of mind numbing frustration, which I think is probably more valuable than anything else. Anyway, Every week we have George's tech update when he takes a look at all the stuff that's going on in the technical world as far as voiceover is concerned and so that you can understand it. What do you got this week? Well, yeah, so I, I always like to I look at different sources for topics. You know, what I've dealt with over the last couple of weeks, Facebook groups, what are the discussions happening, equipment announcements I've heard about, and just notions that just pop into my head. So this is a total mashup of all that stuff. Um, starting off with just one issue that people have often is with USB audio interfaces, um, namely cable length. You'll notice a lot of times when you buy a Scarlett 2i2 or a Steinberg UR12 or fill in the blank USB audio interface, they have one thing in common and that is a very short USB cable. I mean, I haven't seen a USB interface with a cable. That's a really short one. USB cable. I haven't seen an interface with a cable longer than three feet in a very long time. Um, way back in the day, the Shure PG42 USB mic was unique that they included like a 15-foot USB cable, which wow. was pretty amazing. That's really not going to be common. And that's because as these USB cables get longer, um, they things get wonkier or less reliable. And also when we try to extend them using repeaters or hubs, things, there's just more points of failure with USB. It just happens. So um, it's definitely recommended that if you, if you are not going to have your computer in the same room as your mic because it's just too dang noisy, computer fans too loud, whatever, then you're probably not going to want to try to extend the USB cable and run the preamp into the booth. You're probably going to want to have your interface outside the, the booth um, next to the computer as close as it can be and use its stock cable. Yes, it's less convenient. Yes, it means that you cannot just reach over and grab the 
gain knob. But I got to be honest, like once you start doing this regularly as a voice actor, you start, you know your voice, you know the kind of script it is, you're going to find there's probably two or three different settings on your gain, on your preamp, where you know where that knob's supposed to be. Because Dan, I know you don't have your preamp in a booth, right? You walk in, you put on your headphones and go. You set your gain before you walk in there, right? Right. I don't even wear the headphones. I just, everything is set. I know, you know, approximately how loud I'm going to be in a particular, a particular read. Right. Set that, hit record, walk around, go into my booth over here and record and record and record until I'm done, until I'm satisfied I've given enough the right takes. I open the door, I walk out, I hit stop. And then I edit from there. I, you know, a lot of people are like, I got to stop it. I got to set the level. You, you really don't want to be paying attention so much to being an engineer when you're, you know, when you're trying to be a voice actor. So I, I separate the two places. There's the engineering place and then there's the voiceover place. Yeah. I mean, that's something we can help you with too. Like on a session, if you're trying to figure out what are those gain settings, we can help you with that. If you're something you're not confident doing on your own, you know, we can have you record these different styles of reads that you might do character voices for a video game. Right. Um, and, and a meditation video, <laughs> everything in between. That's right. And you'll probably find there's at the very most three different gain settings you might use. Uh, many people, maybe only two. And once you learn where those positions are, it's very easy to repeat and you won't have to have it. So bottom line is it's much better to extend your microphone cable than it is your USB cable. Mic cables properly can be run quite a long distance, 100 plus feet if necessary, right. without any real loss of quality and definitely no uh, added noise if it's a good cable. Um, it should be a well-shielded microphone cable. And I... The cheap cables tend to be not well shielded. Um, the better ones tend to be well shielded, so you won't get noise. But you can run mic cables very long distances. And if you have to use headphones because you're doing Skype, Source Connect type things, headphone extension cables, not a big deal either. Um, so extend the analog stuff, not the USB cables, and you'll be much better off. Excellent suggestion. Thank you. Um, Another thing that came up just recently, I was helping a client, and she happened to have a MicPort Pro 2 in her booth. Um, haven't seen them being used that often because they're still kind of new and a little on the expensive side. But I'll tell you, if you're doing voiceover for, again, games, I think this could be the ultimate interface for game voiceover actors. Um, for the reason that we just got done talking about game, right? The thing about the MicPort Pro 2 is it has this cool hidden feature up its sleeve, and that is it can record at two different levels at the same time. So you can put it, and when you engage the limiter mode, it turns on this circuit. And so now, let's say you're using Twisted Wave, but this works in any recording software. You can now record a new stereo file, and on channel one will be the original level, whatever the gain setting is you're doing. Channel two will be a level minus, I think it's minus 12 dB lower than channel one. And there's a limiter as well. So you're pretty much covered in multiple different ways. Unless you egregiously set your gain to way too high so that you're crushing the input so hard, even the limiter can't keep up. As long as you've done a relatively good job of setting your gain, you're going to be covered for uh, a read where you might occasionally get too hot and, and normally would be clipping the audio. Um, track two will have your back. And that, I think that is pretty slick. You can record in 24 bit 96 K again, not something that most voiceover wants, but apparently I'm seeing game audio producers having some really high standards in terms of their sound files that they want. So this device can do that. And I, show, I showed this actor how, you know, you might be done a session and go back and go, oh my gosh, I'm clipping here and here and here. But then you look at track two, completely um, clipping free. You can just really just throw away track one and just use track two. Or if you're really into editing, <laughs> you can comp them together. I don't know if I would do that. I would just stick with the, the non-clipped version normalize a little bit if you need to to just bring it back up to minus three or whatever and off you go but that's just another 
that thing has so many little facets to it, but that's a hidden one that's so underused, I think. I really never hear people talk about it. And you game voiceover people are doing all your work at home. This could be really, really helpful. Really? Um, so also, I'm seeing also casting calls where they say, we prefer a U87 or a TLM-103. And so that's creating this, this, <laughs> you know, this people are freaking out going, oh my gosh, they're saying I need to have a thousand plus dollar mic to record voiceover and you know all this it's it's creating a panic and i just I just recently i just reminded somebody it says prefer um unfortunately these studios they don't they really don't know how to quantify the quality of the audio that they're looking for they just don't know how to do it they don't have the language for it it's difficult to ex describe um it's just very difficult for them. They don't know how to properly quantify it. So they just start, well, we can probably weed out some of the amateurs by saying, you got to have a Neumann U87, you know, something like that. Yeah. But <laughs> you guys know that buying one of those mics does not make a studio, right? Yeah. I think you probably know that by now. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they'll ask you, do you have a U87? And I'll go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's sitting on a shelf in the closet, but yeah, I got one. <laughs> You know, I mean, the thing is, is can they really tell the difference if your acoustics are right, if your mic technique is right, and you've got the level set right? They're not going to say, "Well, that's a that's a four sixteen, or that's a you know, a, you know, a, an audio technica twenty twenty. Well, they might tell the difference there, but yeah, not unless to the, point the where audio is difference. particularly bright and sibilant or high with a really high noise floor, like a hiss. They're not going to notice that there's something going on with the mic if you've gotten the rest of that set up. So should you lie? <sighs> they they, they don't have to, to see how the sausage is made. Yeah, that's up, <laughs> that's up to you. That's your decision to make. But um, yeah, I don't think uh, if the quality is good, it's good. Um, oh, so in terms of for Mac people out there, um, so we've been talking about maybe for the last, since October, don't install Catalina. Well, Catalina is really at the, at the end of its development life cycle. It is it is it's fully baked. I don't think there's going to be another update to it. If there is, I'll be shocked. But it's now a fully mature version of Mac OS. So if you have been waiting and waiting and waiting and asking, when can I install it? Um, probably now is now a safe time to install it. Still don't do it without doing your due diligence, backing up your computer, making sure you don't have some random plugin or something that you've been using for years that no longer works. I'm talking about Source Connect Pro 3.7, by the way, mm -hmm. which I had and no longer can use because it's 32-bit, um, <laughs> which was really annoying. Um, you know, make sure that you are up to speed with what you have and make sure it'll work. But Catalina is fully mature. It's fine to install. However, you don't necessarily have to install it now. You could at least download it. Yeah. You can go to the App Store and download Catalina, and then when it prompts you to start installing, close the close the win, window. And now you have it ready for when that day comes when you want to install it, because what's going to happen is Big Sur is coming I, I down the say, pipeline. It's going to be just in time for Big Sur. Yeah, <laughs> and so Big Sur will come along, and then you won't be able to get Catalina easily, because Big Sur is the current OS. So you want to have Catalina already on your hard drive for when it's time that you want to install it. So go ahead and download it anytime. Don't necessarily install it unless you're really ready, but you can have it ready to go. Um, just a couple little quickie things. Um, the Austrian Audio OC818 microphone. This is some new tech, beautifully designed mic, designed by the same team that developed all the AKG microphones. C414, C2014, Perception 220, all that. They have their own company called Austrian Audio, and they developed a mic called the OC818. And I am working on a review video that I've co-produced with Andrew Peters, who's my co-host on VO on the, the Pro Audio Suite. He has that mic because he's a mic junkie. <laughs> so, so we did a remote test of the mic, and I'll be releasing a video about it. But has a very unique trick up its sleeve, which you'll have to see the video to know what I'm talking about, but it's pretty freaking cool. Cool. Um, and there's also some exciting news for Source Elements. A new version of Source Connect is coming down the pipe. I'm going to be doing an alpha test 
very early test, but there's going to be a mobile version, proper mobile version. That's going to be really cool to run on iPhone, iPad. Twisted Wave has a new version coming down the pipe. I know there's a lot of stay tunes, a lot of wait and sees announcements, but uh, there's there are some cool things coming soon. And lastly, a little gripe. The Scarlet 2i2 Gen 3 and the Scarlet Solo, both, um, they've gone away from physical switches for phantom power, like a push button on off or a slide on off. And now it's a push, it's an, uh, what do you call it? A momentary switch. It's a click. Yep. And it doesn't remember the state of that setting. And so for a lot of folks who do remove their Mac from the studio, take their MacBook with them, take it to the desk, every time they plug it back in, the phantom power is off. And you have to remember to push that button again. Kind of reminds me of the original MicPort Pro. That was an annoying thing. You had to always remember to push that tiny button on the back of the MicPort Pro the and turn it on. orange light would come on. And... Yeah. Well, at least on the Scarlet, it is, it is a light on the front. It does. It is right where we can see it. But still, it's it's a little bit of a gripe I have. Now, I, I thought the Rode AI1, Rode AI1, which I happen to have right here on my desk, this little cute little guy. I want it back. I assume this <laughs> thing would have the same problem. No, they pro, the, the 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 brilliant engineers at Rode figured out how to make it remember that state. So I noticed when I plugged it in just recently, you'll see the P forty eight light is lit there. Let's put it on camera. If I unplug it, obviously it goes out. Plug it back in, and it uses a proper USB C cable. Does it come on? Is it on? It is. It is on. So this one remembers the state of the phantom power. How about them apples? Cool. Focus right. Get it together. Right. Anyway, that's the end of my uh, my tech update for this week. So, Dan, you want to talk a little bit about headphones and monitoring. headphone monitoring versus speaker monitoring? Right. Which uh, way to go? Yeah, a lot of people ask me about this uh, because you know you want to hear your audio as clear as possible when you're playing it back. Mm -hmm. um, and some people use headphones, and some people use monitors. Mm -hmm. clearly headphones are probably cheaper if you live amongst a lot of people perhaps they don't want the sound of the louder sound of the monitors although they are neighbor or family good. friendly <laughs> right exactly exactly you know yeah. especially if you're you know like i can only record at two in the morning because that's when it's quiet outside uh if you want to play back you know sometimes the monitors can be a bit of a problem now good studio monitors are great if you have the environment to have them in uh, if it's a good acoustically treated room specifically for the monitors, well, a lot of people will work at their desk. That's their booth and they've got their monitors there. You know, as I was saying earlier, I like to separate my engineering from my voice acting and, uh, and edit at my edit suite, which is not in my booth. And because there are acoustic panels in here and there's not a lot of echo, I'm going to get a true representation of what those very powerful studio monitors are giving me, which is the yeah, whole you have idea. a good monitoring environment, right? And really and, good, yeah, yeah. You know, and what studio monitors are is they're very powerful speakers, but they're not loud speakers. They have this, they're what you call near field monitors. So if you're at like yeah, a they're 30 pretty degree focused, angle, right? If you're three be in feet the sweet away, spot. right? Yeah, yeah, you find the and you go, whoa, that sounds darn good. Um, but you know, they're they're there specifically for for you know for mixing and for really hearing really fine detail to the audio now headphones are great because one you're the only one that can hear them uh and then you get into this discussion of well what are the best headphones well as we all know everybody hears differently and everybody sounds different and what sounds good to one person may not sound good to another person so yeah it's interesting like different brands have different kind of sound characteristics they do like they i've do. noticed sennheiser headphones are a little bit darker right like not hyped and bright right um the audio technica's a little bit brighter and then the sony cans everybody likes very bright All right you know and, and so you you have to experiment with headphones and try different ones that's a lot easier to do than probably with studio monitors right. um but uh they're very very much personal preference yeah. for sure yeah I, I remember being in, in a banjo emporium once and i because i was looking at you know i i, I had a pair of uh, rocket uh krk rocket fives for many years 
and and I wanted to you know see what other ones sounded like. Mm-hmm. And it, then it became very very clear to me that the more powerful ones, you know, the, the, you know the good Yamahas and the other ones, you could clearly hear the definition between different frequencies, and which you know some of the the lesser uh, expensive ones, you know, they sound okay, but when you really hear specifically okay at you know at 4k i'm hearing this and i'm not hearing mm-hmm. that and it's you know it work it, it really allows you to hear very clearly what's there yeah uh, high powered amplifiers mean that um, they can run it at a very very low amount of distortion right when an amplifier is trying to make a speaker get loud um if it doesn't have a lot of power behind it you get little bits of distortion that little bit of distortion starts to just muddy the whole thing. It just start you start losing all that definition. So, right. you know, I have a a Mackie a pair. Of, well, I have one Mackie HR 824. That's a big monitor speaker. I have one because the left one, the amplifier on the woofer, went out. Yeah. And you only have room for one. So, <laughs> <laughs> they're twenty year old speakers. So that's not that big of a surprise. It's getting repaired at Audio Rehab right now. But it's a massive speaker with a lot of power. Now, if I want to rock out, I can rock out. <laughs> They're amazing. But in normal listening levels, there's incredible detail because the amps are never being close to overdriven. They have a lot of what we call headroom. Right. So, yeah, yeah it's something to look for. Don't, unless you're, if, I mean, a lot of you are really just using it as a secondary playback tool device. Maybe you need to give your ears a rest from the headphones or it's just something you're going to listen to casually. Um, in that case, you don't need something real fancy. Um, I might call me crazy, but you could even get like a a little anchor Bluetooth speaker, which has a line input jack on it. I've been blown away with how good some of those inexpensive speakers sound with voice, how accurate they are. Yep. And it will do the trick. If that's you just want to have a different playback device that's more reasonably accurate, far more accurate than laptop speakers. So, well, yeah, the laptop speakers know. will not handle any frequencies below like, 200 hertz i think you know yeah. so you're not going to get any of the low end on that you know you're not gonna, you're not going to have a clue if you pop the mic right you're not going to have a clue if there's rumble in the audio if you're using crappy speakers or really you know laptop speakers but with really good sealed headphones oh yeah you'll know if you pop the mic and you'll know if there was a rumble in that recording you'll you'll hear it <laughs> so all right headphones or studio monitors depends on who you are where you are and how much you want to spend Mm-hmm. So anyway, yeah. okay, we got a ton of questions from our amazing yeah, audience. Yeah, they're racking up, they're, they're flying in. Yeah, so let's get to those in just a minute. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be right with those after these. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do... They break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected 
respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. This is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Show. Hey, it's time for Source Elements, that spot on the show where we talk about the amazing variety of products, but specifically for the voiceover actor that is wanting to play a bigger game and, well, actually, at this point, play the game of voiceover because it's almost completely required across, the, across a lot of these genres of voiceover, the creators of Source Connect. Um, Source Connect is a, a very well-honed and a uh, long time developed and improved and supported tool that allows your studio to connect to other studios around the world. It's a standalone application. It doesn't run in Chrome. And soon it will become available on more platforms other than Mac and Windows. But for now, it's a Mac or Windows program. Um, and it talks to the audio interface you already have. It can be a completely run standalone. It doesn't have to be a plug-in, although it has that capability. So if you do want to use it in conjunction with some processing that you do use on your audio, let's say you have a high-pass filter plug-in that you use, um, it can be set up with a little bit of skill to be at, run as an, a plug-in. So if you have Reaper or Adobe Audition or Pro Tools or Logic or Studio One, there's a few more, I'm sure. Um, you can set up Source Connect as a plugin within those platforms. And so that whatever processing you're doing on the audio to deal with rumble or a little of an EQ issue, that can be passed through into Source Connect. So um, that's a really clever uh, way to just do a little very subtle adjustment to your audio before it goes to that studio. So check it out. Get a 15-day free trial. Go to source-elements.com. Get yourself set up. If you want a little extra hand-holding, head to georgethetech.com slash SC, where I've got some training videos and a very long tutorial video on getting Source Connect standard up and running. And uh, get yourself be ready. Get Be ready so that you can take on those projects when they come, because uh, they're going to come if you're if you're working in voiceover. They are more popular than ever with COVID-19. Anyway, thanks again, Source Elements. We appreciate it. And we're back. We'll be back here to answer a ton of questions right after this. Hey, guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants. And you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the Audio Body Shop. Snails like it, too. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk with Dan and George. And boy, have we got lots of questions here. Uh, first one is from Diane Romel Fay. She says, I'm new on my voiceover journey, so I've been subscribing and clicking on lots of VO-related things that have come up in my computer. Something called Speechalo has come up. I'm thinking, well, this can't be good. <laughs> what are your views on this? All right, <laughs> this what, can't what, be good. This, this can't be, this can't be good. You know, Speechalo is one of those things. It's There's a lot of companies that are trying to perfect AI voiceover. You know, they've, you know, one company stole all our voices and now they're like synthesizing them into these, these AI things. You know, I listened to them and they, they, they did this spatter ad on, uh, on Facebook a couple weeks ago. They had some seed money and did a massive ad buy. Yeah. It's popping up everywhere. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's much cheaper than voiceover because it's so expensive because we're good at it, I think is the point. <laughs> uh, right. but you know, and we were talking about this earlier that, that phrase, the uncanny Valley. Yeah. You can tell it's not a real voice. You know, unless people just like total no emotion in the voices that they hear, which is just fine, I guess. Yeah, I mean, maybe like a 10-second speech bite of something could sound pretty realistic, but 
any extended listening of something, you're going to start hearing all kinds of telltale signs that this is not a human. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be used by, I'm sure it's going to be used by small businesses and people with no budget or, uh, you know, for doing things that voiceover normally would be, um, take very, a very long time because it's extremely mundane material. Maybe there's going to be people using it, but the thing is people that care are going to hire real voice actors. There's going to be always a demand for real voices. Um, so I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Yeah. I really wouldn't be. Yeah. I mean, really look at the gaming industry. I mean, they, they evolved into stopping, you know, not using the secretary and the sales manager to, you know, to record the voices for games right. and hiring very good professional actors. Why? Because they're very good professional actors and they bring the humanity to that particular game. Uh, mm -hmm. And that, and I, they, they keep saying, oh, it's getting better. It's getting better. I'm like, eh, I don't think so. How do you program in emotion or just a slight, you know, change in tone? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah, it, it, an algorithm to do that, it's, you know, eventually they will, but probably not in my lifetime, I hope. It's going to be a little while. It's yeah. going to be a while. Yeah. Jeff, our very own chat room moderator, Jeff Holman. Again, classy guy. I didn't put his question first, but second. <laughs> um, can, can you give an example of a 10-foot extension for the USB cable that would not lose quality going from my Scarlet to my MacBook Pro? Shouldn't be a problem. It's not a quality thing, Jeff. Yeah. It's a reliability thing. Sound quality will not vary, but connection quality or reliability of connection can dramatically vary. Yeah. And um, that is, that's really the problem. And I, no, I can't, I mean, honestly, the whole point of what I was saying earlier is I can't recommend a specific 10-foot uh, extension USB that will work without problems. I can't. Um, that's, that's the issue. I've, and I trust, trust me, I've tried it. And, you know, it'll, it'll maybe work today. It might work tomorrow. But six months later, my audio, my client's going, I'm getting clack, clack, crackles and pops in my audio and it's crackling when I play back. And the first thing I always think of, it's got to be that USB cable, that janky thing we hooked up, that extension, that active extender repeater, blah, 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 mm. adapter thingabob. And chances are, and, that, and when you, whenever you get tech support from the company that makes the device, always they ask you, what USB cable are you using? Are you using the cable we included in the box? Right. <laughs> You're no, no. I'm using the. Oh, well, okay. We'll put the original cable back in and disconnect everything else, and now tell us how it works. Yeah, really. I so. I used to run a a 15 foot USB cable in my my old studio back in Buffalo. Never yeah, they had, have them for printers and stuff. Yeah, I never had a problem with it. You know. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't run my audio through there. It was simply it was for a webcam and for right. Uh, you know, and a monitor, I think, and you know, and then it was an HDM a long HDMI run. You know, it, it worked. You know, it's mm -hmm. when you start putting a lot of adapters in the way, it's like, okay, I got a five footer and I got a five footer and you keep plugging them together. Yeah, that's I think, that a good idea. I think the maximum spec length for USB cable is like 15 feet, something like that. So if you find a 15 foot USB cable that has the right connections on both ends, you know, USB A for the computer, USB micro or whatever it is on the other side, you may have good luck with that. Right. But everything else, all the other variations and adapters and repeaters and blah, 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 there's just no guarantee. Just way more to go wrong. Yeah. This next uh, yeah, this yeah. next question, this is this is a great question because it sure. comes to the definition of how people badly define things. Sure. Uh, Michael Alexander asks, any suggestions other than acoustic panels to lower room noise in my closet? Currently, mm -hmm. my noise floor is about minus 48 to minus 57 dB. Again, a confusion between the concept of sound treatment and sound proofing. They are mm -hmm. two totally different things. Yeah. What we're trying to achieve in our booths is isolation, preventing sound from coming from the outside and making its way into the booth and into your microphone. Mm -hmm. And then you've got actual acoustic treatment where you are preventing the
the reflection of your voice from happening. And that's really what acoustical panels are for. They're, you know, the rock sole or fiberglass or something like that that absorbs the sound. But they don't, they're like tissue paper as far as sound going through them. Right. Uh, you know, especially so, low frequencies, it's especially low frequency. You could, you know, you, you'll, you'll see it on a spectrogram. Boy, there's something really rumbling down there. Um, or it's my dog snoring. Uh, and, um, the only way you can prevent exterior noise is with mass with a heavy wall or a, a decoupled construction wall. And that's expensive. And that's why it's important to find the most isolated closet you can. Or, I'll or, tell you, the most mood. common noise issue is rumble for sure, right? That low frequency stuff. Yep. And it's the most difficult to stop acoustically or with soundproofing. Because it's usually a fridge. <laughs> yeah, or really, <laughs> do I'm not talking the low, low off. stuff. Like the ospreys hovering nearby. Helicopters. Yep. Um, but... Um, but those are the easiest to remove electronically with a high pass filter. So I, I want to know, you know, those numbers mean something, but we're not knowing what, not knowing the frequency content of that noise makes it a lot harder for us to tell you what needs to be done to fix it. Because sound treatment and proofing also has to do with frequency content, low, low, mid, mid, high end, that kind of thing. And it all is, it, you know, use, we use different ways to deal with all that problem. So. Not an easy answer, as you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, if you want to soundproof it, you got to have heavy walls or a booth. Yeah. Heavy walls, heavy glass, heavy doors, airtight seals. Yes. Yes. That's the All answer. of the above. Yeah. But acoustic panels aren't going to do anything for you. No. Nope. Maybe, nope. maybe just a little bit. But just a little bit. Yeah. Tiny bit. You get the next one. Oh, yeah. I just saw this today. Uh, Petria Burchard. And the uh, Twisted Wave Facebook group said, uh, asked about, she'd seen something about producers wanting a backup of your audio during the recording. And then that created a discussion as to whether she was talking about real-time backup, which I think that's what she thought the question was regarding. So how can you do a real-time backup of the audio data while you're actually recording? And then that spurred another discussion where they were talking about, well, actually what you, they probably are talking about is recording a backup audio of a Source Connect type session where the studio is recording and then they ask you to record a backup. And that's two different things. That's, that's easy. When they're recording you on Source Connect or IPDTL or anything like that, you hit record on your software, you're covered. That's a backup. But backing up your own audio in real time literally having it in two places at once is not quite as simple definitely not there's a couple different ways think about it there's mirrored hard drives or what's called a raid mirror um, where there's literally two discs or i guess now solid state drives that are both storing the data in real time so if one of those two were to go kaplooey the other one would still have the audio intact that's one way of doing a backup and that's more technical and a little complicated. Another way is to literally, literally record in two devices at once. So you could have uh, your Scarlet recording to your computer, and you could have like a Zoom recorder, not Zoom conferencing, but Zoom brand or Tascam. Um, they have $100 or less inter uh, recorders that you can plug in with a line cable and have audio come out of your Scarlet uh, outputs and have that record as well. So... I've recommended that to a number of people that um, are just tired of having a random glitch screw up a, a, a chapter of a book or something. And just as another way that it's a totally different signal chain or a data chain. It's the same signal chain, but the audio data is stored in its own device separate from the computer. That is to me the probably the most thorough backup I can think of because it is literally a different device. If the computer were to crash or whatever, or have total audio meltdown, that thing is still recording audio cut through an analog input. So a couple ways to handle that, but uh, there you have it. Yeah. Tom, <laughs> Tom Machen wants you to answer this next question. Okay. Uh, this one's for me. Okay. Uh, this is a geek question. I use various DAWs 
off and on for various jobs, and lately I'm finding that they're doing strange glitches for recognizing batch functions in both Mac and PC linked to keyboard shortcuts. They will act as if the key combos I haven't that haven't been sent. So this issue is across operating systems, machines, and DAWs. I don't have any viruses, and I've rebooted. And when I reboot, it solves the issue. Uh, only thing I can think of is I've worn out the keyboards. Your thoughts? Maybe it's time to have a seance. Um, when in doubt, reboot. Yeah, well, you said rebooting fixes it. I don't know how often you have to reboot. Every five minutes, every five days, every five weeks. Uh, you know, rebooting every day is a completely acceptable solution to a lot of things. Um, I recommend shutting down and starting your machine fresh uh, really every day if you record a lot and it's your business. Um, but man, I, you know, I, don't, I haven't heard of this issue particularly and I have really no other magic wisdom. So I won't waste any more time. I don't know. All right. <laughs> now, Jeff has an interesting question here. It says, when I record room tone, I get a much higher level when I'm in the booth, even when I hold my breath, like 10 dB difference. What's going on there? That one, I think that, that sounds like an <laughs> wow. on-site inspection sort of thing. Uh, That's fascinating. Um, well, um, you have a road... You have a uh, Rode NT1A, I think, Jeff, I think. Um, and we already know you have a, a high noise, a, you have a high rumble level in your booth. You, you have a lot of rumble in the audio. I've seen your waveform. Um, so <sighs> that's fascinating. Perfect. I have never heard, I have never seen anybody say that. Have you ever seen that before, Dan? No, I'm. I'm. I'm I don't have an answer. I'm. I'm. I'm theorizing he here that perhaps the fact that Jeff gets in his booth and is taking up, you know, airspace big, in big there, part of the space, yeah, that maybe it's not absorbing the sound; it's allowing it to amplify it. Amplify it somehow. He's become That's his own super heterodyne circuit. Well, because I would think if you're in there, it would <laughs> it would actually absorb some of the energy. You would think, but not amplify it. Well, maybe Jeff's different. Maybe he's from another planet. We don't <laughs> Jeff's know. Jeff's definitely <laughs> different. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, man. Yeah, we, we're gonna have he's to awesome. we're gonna have to see that one physically to understand. Yeah, I, that is that is a very odd phenomenon. We got two bizarre questions in a row. <laughs> Can we make it three? No. Yeah. Well, we got. Um, I got a notice here from our our friend Pacholo de Leon Gonzalez in the Philippines. Yeah, haven't seen him in many many years. But he just says hello. He's a busy guy. Hey, Pacholo, he's in the how Philippines. you doing? From uh, Creative Voices. Yes, and Tom asks, uh, "How do you disinfect your studio booth and mics?" I'm the only one in there. I'm the only one in here. So yeah, <laughs> what do I care. I guess. Oh, in the context of a commercial studio, school, educational facility, which I know Thomas works in an educational facility. Right. Oof, that's a tough one. I would um I would I would have everybody have their own headphones. Yep. Even if they're twenty dollar headphones, doesn't matter. As long as they got their own, that's a big that would be a big one for me. I would not want to share headphones at all. Um microphones, don't spray them with anything. Use a uh Alcohol prep pad, maybe, and wipe off the grill on the outside of the microphone. Um, even the pop screen or the, uh, the anything that somebody would touch, just wipe wipe them off with alcohol, 70% alcohol or better. Um, you know, I thought about those foggers. You know those things they use on the airlines? Yeah. Ryobi apparently has one of these things. I've seen it. Um, maybe if you have a pretty big facility with a lot of equipment and more people are in there, I don't know anything about the fogger technology. I don't, but it'd be something to research because if you got to disinfect a large area, a commercial studio and a lot of stuff, and you don't want a lot of moisture, I don't know if that fogger is bad for equipment. Yeah, right. I don't, I don't know the voodoo behind how that thing works, but um, maybe get one of those molecule air purifying systems that, you know, can, can eliminate down to the molecular level viruses and pathogens and stuff that's probably a good idea yep. people your your voice actors would thank you if you had an incredibly good air quality yeah 
So that might be good. Yeah. But I mean, on a microphone like this, you know, where it's all just a metal screen, you know, just a wipe will work on that. You know, I wouldn't spray anything that would go like through the grid or anything. Yeah. Nobody should be making con. No actor should be making contact with the microphone, period. Right. But again, I, th I think he might be, I really, because I know he works in a university. That's a different story. <laughs> He's got students, people using the equipment, sharing. Right. Yeah. I, w I would use, um, I would wipe things down with alcohol wipes. Yeah. Uh, Jim Edgar says, is there a Neumann TULM190, which has the best of both models? I'm not exactly sure what that means. T, well, there's the TLM and there's the, T, there's the TLM190 and the U87. Right. So the TLM is transformerless. The U87 has a transformer. Right. If I don't it know, sounds Jim. good, it is good. I don't know, dude. <laughs> I have uh, no you guys, idea. You guys are like really trying to chump the stumps here. They really are, but hey, I, that's what we're here chumps. for, you know? They're regulars. They get to do that. Um, uh, there's a TLM 170, 170 that's kind of a very un, unpopular mic because it's expensive. <laughs> it's, it's like right between the 103 and the, and the U87. And I've heard it, and it sounds, it does sound great. It's like a less harsh, bright 103. Smoother, very nice sounding microphone. I like, I, the few times I've heard a 170, I like it a lot. Mm. So I don't know if that would be fulfilling, fulfilling what you're asking, but uh, don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, iPads. iPads. Where do we stand Thomas on says, iPads uh, for VO recording this year? I don't think we've covered it yet or this quarter my problem with ipad is not the ipad in fact the ipad pros are badass computers yeah like specs wise everywhere they're just amazing my problem is the ios sucks <laughs> for for audio recording because it has no audio preference settings that you can specifically choose the input you're using right and so there's no guarantee what input it's using at any one second um, I know when you start Twisted Wave, you can plug in an Apogee mic and then it will prompt, it will clearly do something to acknowledge it's using the Apogee well, mic. You'll see it on the waveform. It's like, boing. Yeah, yeah. You'll get a spike as the mic powers on and you'll see that it's using it. But that to me is the major problem of using iOS for critical work is I don't know what when it's using what mic. <laughs> That drives me crazy. Why do I sound so far away? Because you're not using the mic. You still, yeah. So until the they get their act mic. together with iOS 14 or 15 or whatever the heck it is and do that properly, I'm not going to recommend it. Just not. Not for critical or professional work. So. Yeah. Um, and one final question here. Tom Machen, who happens to ask a lot of questions. Hey, we got your back, Tom. That's right. Purely subjective question. We love the subjective questions. When this virus thing is over, how are professional home studios going to be viewed? How will it change from the way it is now? I think. Well, that, how are they viewed? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, what does he mean by that? Well, clearly, from from the specs that I keep seeing, and several agents are sending out these these edicts from the casting directors that they're working for. You've got to have this, and you've got to because clearly they're hearing stuff that they don't like, right? Uh, or they don't understand what it takes to have a good home studio. Uh, they haven't worked with us. That That's right. Perhaps they should. Uh, We've worked with thousands of voice actors. So we know at this point there's thousands of voice actors with proper home studios. Right. So but hire, hire them, you know. Uh, who, who are the ones? So, yeah, I mean, is I don't know. It's a weird question. I, I know dealing with, um, when I do Pro Audio Suite, we've got two Aussies on that one, right? And... In Australia, until recently, home voiceover studios were considered categorically subpar. They were not yeah. respected at all. And um, Andrew, that hosts the show with us, he's always been highly, very picky about his audio. He's got a well-designed studio and all this, but it, it, it's outside the norm in Australia. And so there I can see that could be a big deal. But home studios have been, professional home studios have been around here in the U.S. for a really long time now. Right. So, yeah, I don't know how that view will change. I don't think it's going to change 
at all. And I just think that the productions that could be done in person in studios are going to return because people are want to be in, they want to work in person. Right. Like they really do want to do it. Yeah. Not everything. I'm sure there's going to be some things that they're going to realize actually works out better or more efficient or saves money or something. Well, I think that's probably but, the bottom line is that it's, you know, a lot of producers are going to say, well, we're, we're spending $500 on a, on a recording studio. This guy can do it for, you know, far less. And, uh, that worries me. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, that, that's an issue because, you know, th that's when people start undercutting. You were talking earlier about, you know, shouldn't we be charging engineering fees? Uh, for, uh, you know, our studio work, for working in a home studio, if they're asking us to do fairly sophisticated stuff. Yeah, I, and that's a very, very much an individual choice. And some portions of the business, it's considered absolutely a necessity that you have a really good studio and that the audio be delivered ready for, ready for air, so to speak. And um, in other cases, that's not considered the norm whatsoever. Um, and rarely if I've, I'm rarely hear voice actors saying that, oh, I have a studio fee and I have an acting fee, but I see it mentioned from time to time. I mean, it's unfortunate. We've started a precedent in voiceover that, you know, the audio production that you're doing as a voice actor is thrown in. Um, and so it's going to be difficult to unbake that cake uh, if you've been throwing it in for 25 years. But you should at least, at the very least, as Dan said to me earlier, he builds it into his rate. So he knows that he feels he's being fairly compensated. You know, so that's good. But, but it's still not communicating that they're actually paying for engineering. Um, right. Like if I was, I think if I was a voice actor, and I'm not, but if I was, I would really like to have an invoice that has my voice production time or my voice time and my engineering time. Um, even if it's only 25 bucks an hour, still... They, they, to see that it's something that they're paying for will maybe help make sure that that is not a, a whole part of the industry that just disappears. That's um, the yeah. jobs of engineering, yeah. you know, disappear. Yeah. Wow. Boy, you get lots of questions and the time flies like that. Yeah. And we've already passed the top of the hour. Yeah. Time to wrap this up. Yeah. So we're going to take a break and we'll wrap this up right after this. Thanks for all your questions, guys. Thanks. You're, You're watching, watching. VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Look what you made me do. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge reward until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. What question do we get most often? Far and away, it's how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer to that question. Take the voheroes.com free getting started in VO course. You heard right. It's free. And it's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the course you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, the business skills you need, and the mindset you need to have all in one single comprehensive online course taught by VO Heroes David H. Lawrence the 17th. This course won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Of course you do. Getting started in VO.com. That's getting started in VO. 
www.voiceoverbodyshop.com. Hey, you know, it's not often we get to hang out in the VoiceOver Body Shop office, home of the VoiceOver Body Shop Broadcast Museum and Time-Wasting Hobby Museum. Anyway, we're here to talk about Harlan Hogan and VoiceOver Essentials. Right now, the Harlan Hogan Voice Optimized Headphones, together with the wonderful LED Full Color VoiceOver Recording Sign, are on special right now at 20 bucks off. No promo cord required. Just put both items in your VoiceOver Essentials shopping cart. The headphones, they're specially designed for VoiceOver, with a nice flat response that allows you to hear you as you exist. And the LED voiceover recording sign is the perfect way to keep everyone around you quiet while you ply your craft. That's 20 bucks off when you buy both. No promo code required. Just put both items in your voiceover essentials shopping cart. Go over to voiceover essentials right now and see all the great stuff they have. Thanks, Harlan. This is Ariana Ratner and you're listening to voiceover body shop, VOBS.TV. And we're back to say goodbye. Uh, hey, next week on this very show, we've got the one and only Elaine Clark, uh, who I'm sure will have some very interesting views on the voiceover industry and on training. And she's a great coach and just a wonderful lady. So And brilliant. A brilliant lady. Uh, who are our donors this week? We've got familiar names like Shauna Pennington Baird, Martha Kahn, Lee Penny, Rob Ryder, Michael Kennedy. Valerie Burgess, uh, Mike Gordon, and Michael Kearns. We really appreciate you guys helping us out. Yeah. Hey, show us your booths. Eventually, this will all end, and we'll be, George and I will be back in the studio, and we'll be able to, like, be in your studio. And I've been getting a few, and we're saving them up, and when we get to that, we'll start having people's uh, booths in here. But send them to this, send them to us in Landscape Not Portrait. Yes. For whatever reason you guys do it. We need to thank our, our wonderful sponsors, too. You take the first one. Let's change Harlan it. Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorsWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. All right. Thanks, guys, for your help. Uh, thanks to Jeff Holman doing a kick-butt job in the uh, chat room tonight. Lots of great questions. Sue Merlino for getting it done and getting in her car and driving right over way. here and doing it and getting it done and pressing those buttons and all those great things she does. And Lee Penny for just simply being Lee Penny. Well, this is not an easy business, but we're here to help you out with all the tech stuff that you guys need to know. Come talk to with us, you know, visit us at our websites, watch our show. But it really comes down to one thing. If it sounds good. It is good. All right. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next time. Tech Talk.